first time in the entrance prayer, which can be found on page five, and you miss the limit. O Lord, I trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been out for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. The response this morning is, The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he require us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own bruises, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever keeps the word of Christ, the love of God is truly perfected in him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn to the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic and over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same. So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Our English language can be very difficult for someone to learn who comes from another country. We have words in English 
that sound exactly alike, but are spelled differently and convey different meanings. The example that I thought of was holy. In Leviticus, we heard today, be holy as the Lord your God is holy. But when we think of holy, we can think of it H-O-L-Y, holiness. We could think of it as being full, W-H-O-L-L-Y. And we can also think of it as your ground littered with holes, H-O-L-E, L-Y. So all three sound alike, but they convey a different meaning. And I thought if I were to change holy, H-O-L-Y, to holy, fullness, completeness, W-H-O-L-L-Y, would it change the meaning of that statement from God? Be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now, we have been taught as children growing up that God is whole. He is complete within himself. He is perfect. God is all. But when we think of ourselves, we often say, well, I'm the one who is incomplete. I'm the one who is lacking. I'm the one who is in need. I cannot be holy like God. I'm always going to have some type of need while here uh, I am on earth. And that got me thinking. I am in need. I am lacking. But am I? When I started to think about it, I thought of it in my day. Am I truly lacking or in need? If we were to think about that and ask people, they would generally say, well, not necessarily. We have roofs over our heads. Our bellies are full. We're not suffering any type of persecution like the uh, Catholic martyrs in Africa and other parts of the world. No one forced us to come here this morning. Sure, we could always look at our situations and think, well, wouldn't it be nice if we had a little more money in our pockets? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a, a better automobile? Or wouldn't it be nice if uh, we had a house that would match what we need at the current situation? Sure, we can always come up with something to say, wouldn't it be nice? But are we in need? Do we ever stop and think of ourselves as in need, incomplete, lacking? I think we do when it comes to the sacrament of reconciliation. When we go to confession, we recognize, yes, I am in need. But how often does that recognition only stay in that sacrament of reconciliation. That when we exit the doors of the confessional, we lose our focus. We stop paying attention to that area that we're in need. And in fact, I find probably that's why I, and I would say probably others, find that we go to confession for the same things repeatedly. You would think we would learn, but we forget sometimes. So as we prepare for Lent, which arrives very soon on Wednesday, I thought about some things that we could ask ourselves, four questions to help us maybe get into the right frame of mind, the right mindset as we begin our Lent. I will not give you an answer because only you, only I, can provide our own answers. But the questions came after I was uh, looking at the St. Vincent de Paul Society. They have a member handbook. And they had some questions, and I want to play off of them. And here they are. Question number one. <laughs> 
Has my spiritual life become something I do? Or is it something that I am? Number two, have I allowed the movement of society to affect me? Or have I sought to affect society, those around me? Three, have I allowed my own suffering, physical, mental, emotional, have I allowed it to stop or to hinder my spiritual growth? Or rather, have I allowed my spiritual growth to flourish in the midst of my suffering? And finally, have I allowed my spiritual life to become a mere participant in my everyday life? Or do I allow my spiritual life to guide my everyday life? May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us stand for our profession of faith, our freedom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our souls, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our <clears throat> For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our <clears throat> For those who travel by sea, land, or air, or captives and all held in prisons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our prayer. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions in our parish prayer book, for Joyce Lumpkin and family, Frank Coe, Jimmy Corley, Dave Beatty, Dick and Jim Bullock, Brian Pate, James Foster, Blaine, Chad Hamby, all military, especially those deployed and their families, for veterans, Vicki Bergen, Ben Holman, John Castleberry, for our president and his family, for our nation, for Glenda Taylor, for Angela Burkett, may she rest in peace, and for L.J. LeBlanc, and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, 
for all intentions and spoken and unspoken through the resurrection, through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. And let us pray for the repose of the soul of Father William Folsom, for whom this Mass is being offered today. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, 
We humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with choirs and angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the mind of you, but only take the word of my soul to
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Just a reminder, Ash Wednesday is coming up. The schedule is in your bulletin, along with the schedule and the information concerning the Knights of Columbus Lenten fish fries. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you. Prayer to St. Michael for our families. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praise and protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus.